Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to another Logic Pro 11 tutorial. Today we are going to jump into editing MIDI in the Piano Roll Editor and I'm gonna walk you through all of the edit tools in Logic's Piano Roll Editor. But before I get started, I need to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox is the ultimate file storage and collaboration tool for musicians, artists, producers, and mix engineers. You can upload your mixes, stems, multi-tracks, and even full DAW sessions to store or share with your collaborators, who can then leave timestamped feedback on your projects. And as a producer and mix engineer that works for hire, I love that I can create folders for my clients' projects that can be turned into an inbox. I can then share this inbox with my client who can upload their project files directly to my Boombox account, even if they don't have a paid account themselves. When working with mixed clients, I can set their access to commenter so they can only listen and leave feedback. Once they've paid the bill, I can switch them over to commenter with download access so they can download their final mixes. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their pro or premium plans if you need more. Now, this is just the same project I was working on in the previous video but it gives me some MIDI data to work with here. One thing that's worth mentioning here is that the tracks area has its own set of two edit tools here. Well, it's, it's more than two edit tools, but there are two different tools you can select from. The one on the left is the left click tool, and the one on the right is the command click tool, meaning that you have to hold command in order to access that tool. The same thing goes for the piano roll editor. It has its own set of tools that are different. Some of them are the same, but they're different. Most of them are different from the tracks area. And just one thing to note here is that, you know, when you're in the tracks area and you click in here, you'll see this little blue highlight around that area. And then when you click in the piano roll, you'll see that that highlight comes around the piano roll. So that blue highlight is essentially showing you what area of logic or what editor in logic is in focus. Okay, so let's start off with just the chords here. We'll just do something uh, simple here. Let's say that I want to trim up and maybe move notes, uh, maybe transpose them around. This can be done with the main tool, which is the pointer tool. So once again, the tool on the left is the left click tool, and the tool on the right is the command click tool. So right now I have the pencil tool selected as my command click tool. And you'll see when I hold the command key, it switches over to the pencil tool. Let's talk about the pointer tool first, though. So the pointer tool allows you to grab notes. You can drag them up or down, left or right. Uh, what you can also do with this is you can click and drag and make selections of multiple notes. You can trim from the left or right side. And you can do this with individual notes or a selection of notes. You can also grab like a, this whole chord here and I could move it somewhere else. Or if I wanted to copy something, maybe I wanted to copy this chord over here. What you can do is you can just hold option and then click and drag and it'll duplicate that MIDI data. So very similar to how the option click and drag function works in the tracks area. And then just one more time, I'll, I'll repeat this. If you click here, this will turn on or off your MIDI out. So if you drag over notes with MIDI out on, you'll see that the notes actually play back. If you don't wanna hear notes as you're editing them, make sure to turn off MIDI output. Now, what's important to remember here is that most of these edit tools will conform to whatever the grid snap option is. So if I turn on snap to grid and I go to division, and then let's set this to absolute value, and I start trimming notes, you'll see that the trimming actually snaps to the grid lines. I'll just zoom in a little bit more there so you can see that. So you can see the front end trim is snapping to the uh, to the grid line there. I can do the same thing back here. Maybe I want to drag these out just like so. Or maybe I want to have a little bit of a gap in between these and I want all of the notes to line up on the back end. So you could do that as well. And again, if I choose something like bar or beat, you'll see that the trim function snaps to the bar line. If I grab notes and move them around, that snaps to the bar line. So there's all sorts of ways uh, to use the grid snap with your edit tools. Generally, I like to work with the pointer tool as the main tool and then the pencil tool as the secondary tool. And so again, that just means I've got to hold command in order to use the tool. So one thing you can use this for is just entering in MIDI data manually. So I can click 
it adds in a note. And you'll notice that it made it two bars in length. It only did that because the length of the previous note that I edited was two bars in length. So like you can see, I trimmed this down to one bar. Now, if I enter in another note, you'll see that the next one is one bar in length. If I trim this down even further, the next note I create will be that same length. So it remembers the previous note length uh, that you've created. And if you create a note and then click and drag while still holding down your mouse, you can make the note you've just created longer or shorter. Now, the other thing that Logic's Piano Roll Editor does is it remembers the velocity of your last note. So if I select this note and set it to like 100, then the next note I create will not only be the same length, it'll also be the same velocity. And remember, you can drag over notes and adjust their velocity here. The next tool is the eraser tool. Man, this is like probably the most useless tool in Logic because, you know, the normal workflow would be you just select a note and then hit delete. But really, all the eraser tool does is it just deletes notes. It's very, very simple, uh, pretty cut and dry. There are some other uses for the eraser tool outside of the piano roll editor, but we'll come back to those in a later video. Okay, the next tool is the finger tool. So the finger tool is another tool where you can essentially use this just to trim notes. If you want to adjust the length of notes or the trim of notes, and you only want to do it from the back end, see how it's only doing it from the back end, it's not doing it from the front. If that's all you want to do, you can use the finger tool for this. Unlike the pointer tool, you can't transpose notes up or down with the finger tool. You can't move notes around. You can only trim. So finger tool is another kind of, I don't want to call it useless, but it's it's one I don't use hardly at all because all of its functions are built into the pointer tool already. Okay, scissors tool. This one is very helpful. So let's say you're building out a chord progression. Let's, in fact, let's move over to a different track here. Let's go down to the bass track. Let's say that you've entered in like a bass line like this with all long tones and you want to separate some of these notes. You want to chop the notes. What you can do is you can use the scissors tool to split the note just like so. And just like all of the other tools, this will snap to whatever your uh, grid snap value is set to. So I could do like 16th notes. You know, I could do something like that. Or maybe I could create different rhythms. And if you need to chop a note and like do it really quickly, there's actually a modifier key for this. If you hold option while using the scissors tool, it'll separate the note into a bunch of the same division, a bunch of 16th notes, 8th notes, whatever you want. This will actually chop at the grid division. So if I'm here at 16th note, hold option and click it'll chop that note into 16th notes. If I'm here at an eighth note away from the beginning, it'll chop into eighth notes. And it'll do the same thing for like dotted values. So it's just a really cool way of chopping up notes into different rhythms. And it's really helpful for like starting, you know, taking like a really basic bass line like this, cutting it up and then transposing notes up and down. And we might as well give that a shot while we're here. Okay, so like if I wanted to maybe cut a note out of here, maybe let's do like that. Move this up to the third. Maybe we'll do something like that. Let's drop that down an octave. So really helpful for chopping up notes and building bass lines, more complex bass lines and other, you know, melodic ideas from just simple whole notes. Now, if you need to transpose notes up and down without clicking and dragging them up and down, if you select a note or multiple notes and you hold option and press up or down, this will transpose the notes up or down by one semitone at a time. Over here, what I did is I dropped this note down an octave and the shortcut for this is option shift up or down. So up will bring it up an octave. Scroll up there. There it is. Option shift down will bring it down an octave. 
Next up is the join tool. This is very similar to the join function out here in the tracks area where you can select multiple regions, press J and it joins those regions together. But here we're talking about joining together MIDI notes. So it's sort of the opposite of the scissors tool. So let's say for example, I've got a chord progression here and I've got some shared notes from bar to bar and I want these shared notes to sort of be tied over the bar. What I can do is I can drag over these notes and then use the join tool and it'll combine those notes together. So if I drag over these and click on it with the join tool, it joins them together. And then I can come in here and I can manually trim these up just like so. Or I can use the function I showed you guys in the previous video and that is shift backslash to force legato. And then I can drag over this whole chord, join it together, drag over these notes, and join them together. Okay, next up is the mute tool. Another kind of useless tool, essentially what this does is it mutes notes. <laughs> so if you, you know, if you want to mute a note just to kind of audition, you know, what a musical idea sounds like without those notes, without permanently deleting them, you can do that. and then just click on them again to unmute. Now, like I said, this is kind of a useless tool because there's a really uh, easy shortcut for this. If you select one or more notes and you press Control M, this will mute those notes. And then if you just drag over them again and hit Control M, this will unmute them. This will work out in the tracks area as well. If you need to mute a region, you just select a region and you hit Control M. But again, the tracks area has its own version of the mute tool right here. But if you remember that key command, you'll never have to use the mute tool. Next up is the quantize tool. Let's go to a different track here for this. Let's go to the melody. Let's unquantize these notes. There we go. And what the quantize tool does is it essentially quantizes to whatever your time quantize value is over here, but you can just kind of click on notes in order to quantize rather than using the shortcut Q. So remember in a previous video, I told you you can select, well, first you gotta choose a quantization value, select notes, hit Q, and it quantizes them. To me, that's really the fastest way to do it, but if you need to quantize just certain notes and not others, this is what the quantize tool can be useful for. If you're just going through and sort of cherry picking certain notes to fix while leaving others off of the grid, I can totally see this being a viable option if you're trying to do something like that. So that's all the quantize tool does is it quantizes notes that you click on. Next up, we have the velocity tool. Now the velocity of every single note in the piano roll editor can be adjusted right here with this velocity slider. If you select one note, you can adjust the velocity of that one note from one all the way up to 127. And if you select multiple notes, you can adjust their relative velocity altogether. So if I wanna make all of these lower, but in relative position to each other, you can do that, pull it up, same thing. Or like I said before, you can hold option and this will set all of those notes to the same velocity. So there's a lot of situations, especially in electronic music production, where I want all of the velocities to be the same. So I may do something like that. But then what you can also do is you can use the velocity tool and click and drag up or down on a note to adjust its velocity. So if you're going through like, uh, like an intricate piano recording and trying to get all of the velocities just right, you can kind of go through and do this and just manually edit the velocity of each note. So that's what the velocity tool is used for. Most of the time I just use the velocity slider, but there are some situations where I'm working with a really intricate piano recording where I may need to go through and adjust the velocity on a note by note basis. The zoom tool. So if you know your zoom shortcuts, you'll never have to use this tool. But if you click and drag over an area, it zooms in on that area, click again to zoom out. This is virtually identical to the option control shortcut I showed you in the tracks area. Hold option and control, then click and drag to zoom in. Option control and click on the background to zoom out. And this actually works with just option, but if you click on a note, you won't be able to access the zoom tool. 
However, when you hold control, you can. So it's two different shortcuts that do almost the same thing. Okay, so to talk about the automation select and curve tools, we're gonna need to add some automation to one of these tracks. And in a previous video, I explained that many instruments in Logic by default will have some sort of an effect that's paired to the modulation wheel. And you can try this out by record enabling the track, just pressing play and then moving the modulation wheel on your MIDI controller. It sounds like there's something on there, but it's not like like a really noticeable effect. So let's choose a different patch for this. Let's try this chill out patch again. Yeah, so there's some sort of like really noticeable filter sweep on there. Let's transpose these chords up an octave with the region selected. I'll press shift option up. There we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit R to record and I'm just gonna move the modulation wheel and record in that MIDI automation on the track. Okay, so you can see the controller data there in the region. How do you access this data and edit it later? Well, if you double click to open this in the piano roll editor and you click right here, this will show you any automation or controller data that is written into this region. Now, right now it's just showing note velocity, but if I click here, this will jump over to the modulation wheel or you can select it manually from this menu. So you can see that controller data that I wrote in with the modulation wheel. If you don't have a modulation wheel, but you want to write in these types of effects manually, you can actually just use the pointer tool and click in and edit this automation. So I could do something like this to bring it back down, maybe bring it back up, bring it back up here, and then maybe bring it back down over here. And then you can click and drag on these automation points and move them around to change the shape of that modulation effect. Well, you can actually use the automation select and automation curve tools to further edit and customize this automation. Let's start with the automation curve tool. What this does is it allows you to change the shape of the automation that you've drawn in. So, if, so maybe I wanna do something like this where it comes in real slow, but then sort of tails out really quickly. So that's dragging up and down. You'll get like an exponential or logarithmic shape. And if you drag left or right, you'll get more of like an S-curve type shape. So we can do really cool things like this and create some more interesting sounding modulation. Okay, let's pull this down a touch, that down a touch, and that down a touch. And let's say that we want to copy all of this over to bar 10, for example. Now, you can actually just use the regular pencil tool and you can move automation around. You can even hold option and it'll duplicate that automation. And essentially what the automation select tool does is it just does that. It just selects automation while ignoring all other types of MIDI events. So I can make a selection, hold option, and drag this around. So automation select I don't use very often because most of its functions can just be done with the pointer tool. Although up in the tracks area, there are some reasons why you would use automation select as opposed to using the pointer tool. But that's a way you can sort of create the automation once and then copy that shape over to other areas of your MIDI recordings. And it's also worth mentioning that you can use the pointer tool to drag and select automation, and then you can just press delete to delete the automation. And you can also use the pencil tool to sort of freehand draw in your automation. So you can do things like this 
and just kind of freehand those things in. Again, very helpful when you want to draw in MIDI automation, but you don't have a MIDI controller. But let's move on to the brush tool. So for this, let's go to the drum track here. And on the drum track, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the entire hi-hat row of notes here. And what the brush tool does is it allows you to sort of enter in notes kind of quickly and sort of at like a rapid fire pace. Like you can just kind of click and drag to add them in and then click and drag back to erase them. See that? Same tool. And you can see it switches over to the eraser tool. So this just makes it really easy to enter in notes quickly in a sequence. But let's say I want to just add in a bunch of 16th note hi-hats really quickly. I'll just click and swipe. There's all my hi-hats. Let's pull up the velocity. And the brush tool works similarly to the pencil tool in terms of it remembering the previous velocity. So where does the brush tool get its rhythmic information? Like what is its rhythmic reference? Well, it's the time quantize menu. So if you set this to 16th notes, it's gonna create 16th notes. Let's go ahead and quantize everything to 16th notes while we're at it. If I delete these and I set this to an eighth note and do the same thing, you'll see now it creates eighth notes. Or if I select a quarter note, now it's gonna do just straight quarter notes. Or maybe I want some triplets or something like that. I'll go to 16th note triplets. So that's what the brush tool does. It allows you to enter in notes in a repeating fashion Another helpful feature if you're building drum patterns in the Piano Roll Editor is once you've gotten a basic pattern out and you've used all of your kit pieces, if you click right here, what this will do is it'll collapse down the Piano Roll to only show the kit pieces or the, the notes that you're actually using in that region. Okay, so that wraps up the Piano Roll Editor and the MIDI edit tools in the Piano Roll Editor. There are some features in the Piano Roll that I haven't shown you. These are mostly just things that are outside the scope of this course, or they're things that I don't particularly find helpful. Um, for example, scale quantize. I almost never use it, but it's quite simple. It'll quantize to a particular key rather than quantizing the timing. So this is all in A minor. If I chose A major, dragged over these notes and hit the Q button, it's gonna transpose any notes that are outside the key of A major to notes that are in the key of A major. Although I don't quite find this uh, helpful in a practical sense because it doesn't always result in something that sounds good. A couple other things I do wanna talk about here. If you wanna quickly access your tools without having to come up to this menu, you can actually just press T and this will bring up the tool menu. So you can choose a different tool, press T, choose another tool, press T, and what you'll also see is there are some shortcuts for each of these tools. So if I'm like on the mute tool and then I press T and then T again, I get to the pointer tool. If I press T and then press P, now I go to the pencil tool. T and Q, I have the quantize tool. And then back to the pointer tool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.